Is the sound okay? Yeah. Can I move? Okay, we're running. Okay. Well, George Harrison, it's it's really uh, great to have us come over here to do this interview. And as our sign of appreciation, we've got a countdown pin for you. Thank you. It's a bit big, isn't it? It fits on here like this. <laughs> yeah, that's it inside. I have the chewing gum somewhere here so you can stick it to yeah. your jacket. Maybe if you like So there's something inside, is yeah. there? Yeah. You can open it. I see. Thank you. Countdown. That's actually the box that broke uh, Mick Jagger's fingernails uh, a couple of weeks ago. Oh, uh, yeah? yeah? Now, we're here to talk about the, the new album, Traveling World with Volume 3. Um, first, though, I'd, I'd like to know, because this is the first chance we have to, to ask you about that, how, how actually did the, the Wilburys uh, project come about? On the new record or oh, originally? Uh, the originally. First, first, time, first time it came about, I just made a record called uh, Cloud Nine. In Europe, you know, they make those 12-inch singles, and they usually like to have an extra song on the, on the record. So they asked me for an extra song, and I didn't have one already recorded. So I thought the easiest thing to do is just go in the studio the next day, write a song quickly, record it, and mix it, give it to them. And uh, so that night I had dinner with Jeff Lynn, who was having dinner with Roy Orbison. We all had dinner together. <laughs> and I said, well, tomorrow I'm going to go find a studio and go in someplace make up a tune and make this record. So I said to Jeff, do you want to come and help? And he said, yeah, okay, but the problem is, you know, where are we going to find a studio and an engineer so quickly? Uh, so Roy Orbison was there and he said, oh, well, if you do something, call me. I'd like to come along and watch. So then I, th I thought, well, J uh, Bob Dylan had a little studio in his garage. So I called him and said, do you mind if we come along tomorrow? He said, no, come along, that's okay. And uh, Tom Petty also, I had to go to his house to pick up my guitar, was around his house. So he said, oh, good, I'll come. I was wondering what I was going to do tomorrow. So the next morning, I started to write a, a song, and I thought, well, if Roy Orbison's going to come, it's silly to have him sitting there. You know, it's, you know he's a better singer than everybody. I'll, I'll write a little part for Roy to sing, and uh, Jeff thought that was a bit cheeky, you know. Anyway, we got to Bob's house, and Jeff and I finished the song off, uh, music to it. We didn't write the words at that point. And, uh, and then we wrote the lyrics and that story. I've said that story many times about uh, to try and think of what the song lyric would be. Um, we need a title or some idea, and I saw a box in the garage of Dylan's house. It said "Handle with Kerr," so we wrote the lyrics around that. And as I had the part for Roy, then I thought, well, I might as well get Bob and Tom and Jeff. Everybody singing in the middle part. So we made the record, we mixed it. I took it to the record company, and they said, "Oh, it's too good to just give to Europe on a." Uh, extended play because it's not going to sell Cloud Nine record, it's not on the album. And they didn't want it to be imported to America and for it to have no value. So I just kept the, the tape in my pocket, I kept playing it. I thought, well, the only thing I can think of doing is if we did that one song in one day, all we need is nine days with Bob and Roy, everybody, and we make an album. So. So that's what I did. I asked them to, uh, let's make an album. So basically, you're the one who initiated tra the Traveling Wilburys as a group. Well, yeah, it came about by those circumstances. And it just happened that Roy and Bob and Tom, everybody was there. Mm -hmm. What was the main objective <clears throat> uh, for, for the Traveling Wilburys? Just to have fun or? Yeah, just to, to write songs quickly, not get hung up about it, and just see what happened, really, and have fun. Mm -hmm. for, for, well, when I first read the bio and, and, and the info on the Traveling Wilburys, I, I thought it was brilliant, you know, call everybody a Wilbury. Who, who came up with that? Well, I just thought that, uh, you know, it would be 
I mean, there was always those groups in, in the 70s, they made these superstar groups, and we hated that, you know, the idea of these famous people all trying to make a record. Most of the records weren't that good, but, you know, it doesn't mean it's going to be good if you just get these famous people together. Mm -hmm. I wanted to avoid that totally. If you look at the record, it doesn't have anybody's name on. Now, with the new record, everybody knows, obviously, who it is, but for the first record, it was a surprise, and we didn't put our names, we just made up silly names, and even the credit to the record company, like CBS, where you have to say, you know, Bob Dylan appears courtesy of CBS, well, even that, it says, Lucky Wilbury. <laughs> But they didn't notice, you know, I put that on to see. I thought they were going to complain, but they didn't. And was it really as, as a <coughs> plan to stay anonymous at first? Yeah. And just to prolong the um, anonymity as long as possible. All right. D did you ever expect that it would, be so it would be so successful as it is right now? Well, by the time we finished the record, uh, like, we, we did the, the songs, wrote the songs in the 10 days, but Jeff Lynne and myself then produced it into the album, so we spent a little bit more time working on it. Mm -hmm. And by the end of it, we thought it was a good record. I thought if um, just by the people who were on the record, that's good enough maybe in America to sell four or 500,000 copies, but if if it's not good music, then it won't really sell anymore. It doesn't matter who it is. And uh, the record, obviously, people liked it, and it did very well. So I was happy about it. But I didn't expect anything, really. And doesn't the success uh, put the same pressure on you as it did, like, when you each were solo? To, to you mean the, for the new record? Yeah. Well, as Tom Petty said, uh, in an interview we did in America, he said uh, there was so much pressure we decided to avoid volume two and just go straight to volume three where there was no pressure. Yeah, whose idea, whose idea was that? <coughs> to name it volume three. This will drive the collectors crazy. Yeah. Oh, I thought of that because it was, uh, it's obvious, you know, volume one, volume two. It's too obvious, you know, you had to make it volume three, just, just you know, for the change. Well, uh, each of you are very successful and, and, and busy musicians. Uh, wasn't it hard to get everybody back together and, and to, to write and record again? Yeah, it was uh, just a matter of timing, just find out when. Once I knew that Bob was interested to make you know, a new record, then it was a matter of just finding when he had the space in between his tour. Mm -hmm. He's always on tour. And, and how does it work? Are you, are you basically all friends or, or, or colleagues? or? A do you hang out with each other? Or? Yeah, we hang out together, yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, the fact that they live, uh, Tom and Bob live in the States, so you know, we see them when we go, go over there, or if they're on tour, we see them. We spend most of the time when we're making the record. Mm -hmm. and, and who of the others are really close, like uh, Tom Petty and Bob Dylan, who, who hang out with Well, you know, people. Tom toured for a couple of years with Bob, mm. but they don't seem, they don't sort of hang out that much together when, when they're not on tour. Jeff and Tom, and uh, they get on well, but Jeff doesn't really hang out with Bob either. Well, Bob's always on the road. Mm -hmm. Okay, and when, when he comes home, he wants to be alone. I suppose so. Mm -hmm. Now, I heard you wrote 14 songs in Two days? Mm, no, that's a bit of an exaggeration. We wrote two songs a day for the first five days, and then the following week we got together again. We, we did five songs in one day with the drummer all live. But that's the, the basic structure of the song. That isn't with the lyrics and the melody. We then wrote the words later. And how does that work? You all sit in one room and just yeah, just start sit jamming? down like this. And instead of having microphones and cameras, we have guitars. Mm -hmm. Now, how how long totally did it did it take you to complete the complete the album volume three? Well, if you add up all the days, it was about six and a half weeks. Usually, bands. That, I mean, you hear like Tears of Fears took three years to record an album. Do you think that's it sounds like as well, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It sounds like it took three years. Do you, you think? Know, do you think spawning, uh, spawning, 
the spontaneous. Spontaneous, yeah. yeah. Well, we all, when, you know, when we made solo albums, we take longer because it's difficult to, um, you know, to make sure that you're doing the right thing. In the Wilburys, it's a totally different situation with four people there. You know, there's when you write the words, if uh, one or two people don't like that particular line, then you just write it again. But by the time you've written the words or are singing the words, then uh, you know that that's final and that'll do. So you don't get hung up on it because there's shared responsibility. So um, also in the structure of the songs or the, the, the chord change or the attitude that the song has, it's much easier to determine because if the moment everybody agrees and starts playing it, you know that's good enough for me if they all like it. Mm. <coughs> now about the new names. Uh, you changed name, you're Spike now. Spike Yeah, Wolverine. it's just, yeah, just a joke really. I mean, the newspapers already start, you know, at first they didn't know what was happening and then they all get cocky and they think, you know, oh yeah, Charlie Jr., Tom Petty, you know. So I just thought just change the name just, just to keep them on their toes. Mm -hmm. So with the next album, Volume 5, you'll probably change names again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now it's, it's, it's a, uh, almost uh, two years ago since, um, since Roy Orbison passed away. Is, is his influence still there on, on this album in a way? Well, I don't know about his influence, but his, um, I mean, we, we still have the same feeling about him as we had when he was in the band. And uh, I mean, we don't sit around talking about him that much, mm. but, uh, and we don't actually write, I think if he was there, you'd tend to write more thinking about his voice. But um, this time we just wrote tunes you know, whatever came out that felt good, we used. We didn't uh, think too much about, you know, obviously about Roy's kind of songs. Mm -hmm. And I and, uh, understand there was some talk about uh, replacement, but... It was talk in the newspapers mainly. We mm -hmm. never talked about it because you can't replace him. <clears throat> you, could, you could get any number of other people if you wanted, if you needed other people. But the way it happened, as I just explained, mm. it, it just is how it happened. You know, we didn't ask Roy to be in the group till after we'd already made the, the first record. Mm. And uh, it was just the fact that he was there, that he was in the group. Still, who, who today would make a, a, good, a good, proper Wilbury? Could you name some, some musicians you'd like to work with? I don't know. There's a lot of musicians I'd like to work with, but the thing about the Wilburys was it was a, uh, it just happened, you mm -hmm. see. And the moment you start to try and contrive, well, we could have this person. It'd be easier just to make a new group, you know. In fact, that'd be the thing if you wanted to work with other musicians, rather than put them in the Wilburys. It'd be easy just to invent a new name and make a new, different kind of album. Mm -hmm. Okay, Gary Moore is, is on the brand new single. Yeah. How. Uh, how did that come about? Well, Gary lives by me. He's my neighbor. And uh, he was, he's been around for a long time, but I, I've known him just about four, four or five years now. Since he moved, he lived near me. When we did that song, I just thought, well, it had to have a guitar solo put on it, and I could just imagine me or Jeff Lynn trying to figure out a guitar solo that would not really be in that style. And I thought, well, why not just get Gary to play it? He came along, it took him five minutes. It's brilliant, great player. You think he's one of the best guitar players in the world? He is, actually. I don't know if, um, <clears throat> from his records yet, if that's come across, but I've had the privilege of seeing him playing, you know, just in a little room quietly and he is he's incredible I mean apart from the fact that he's fast it's not just the speed that impresses me but he's um, he's got a great sense of melody and improvisation and also pitch you know when he bends those strings he goes straight to the note it's not all flapping about you know mm -hmm. in between like a lot of players what do you think uh, is, is keeping him from, from going all the way in his albums, like doing basically everything? Well, you know, he started out with a like heavy metal kind of record. Now his new album, or his latest album, is, is sort of come 
backed off from heavy that heavy is sort of it's like blues mm -hmm. but more um, sort of heavy blues but I think he's gonna you know become more and more focused in what he likes and what he wants I mean I personally I like to hear him play some things on acoustic guitars or all different kinds of things because uh, you know there's more to him than, than what you hear just in that loud big Marshall stack of amplifiers you know that kind of stuff um, Traveling Willie Wilburys, Volume Three. Um, do, you, do you still listen to it? Are you are you proud yeah. of the album? Yeah, I love it a lot. Really, uh, oh, very happy with it. Are you more happy with it than than Volume One? Well, I think in a way it's a, it's a stronger record. It's more integrated. The first one, we um, you know, was so new to us. We didn't really know what was going to come out of it. We just started to make it, and we finished it, and then we heard what it was like. It's only when you put them all together and you see what it is. But now we had two years, and also uh, we were more comfortable, I suppose. It was easier to get together and write new songs. So all the songs were written together. I think it has more of a group feel, possibly, than the first one. I did like the first one a lot when it was done, because it was such a surprise. But uh, I think the second one's just got a bit more bottle. Third, second. Second album. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, what's what's going to be the title of the the, the third album? Ever thought about we that? We don't even know if we make one yet. We have to wait and see if we make a third album, and we see what it's called at that time. Probably mm -hmm. Volume Thirteen B or something like that. Who knows? Now, when are uh, the traveling Wilburys actually going to travel? Well, we're traveling all the time. I just travel now to get here. Mm -hmm. And when are, are they Bob's going to travel? Bob's on the road constantly. Yeah, but when are, are they going to travel with instruments? Together, you mean halls? to do a concert? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Ever thought about have it? To wait and see. Everybody, all the time, that's all everybody talks about. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, we don't have any plan. Uh, but it doesn't mean it may never happen. Maybe we'll do something. Okay. Now, what's been your best experience uh, up until now with uh, with the traveling Wilburys? What, what's really the good thing about it? Well, just the whole thing about it. Just the fact that we were able to get together and produce two albums and four videos, to me, is uh, it's sort of a bit of a m small miracle, really. And then the pleasure of and f the fun of. Um, writing the songs, recording them, and the various other things that have happened because of the Wilburys. It's just a nice thing, you know, it's just a, it's a good thing. We're all good friends. Mm -hmm. It's nice to be able to, it's an excuse to hang out together, really. <laughs> where, where do you get your inspiration from? I know, I know Paul Simon in the Simon and Garfunkel era used to go and sit in the bathroom, uh, lights out, uh, to have his inspiration come up. Where do you go? We just sit in the room where we're writing the song and, and we, we make up the, the basic song, maybe without the words, maybe we get an idea or a title, but when we've put the, the song down onto tape and then we'll sit there and get a pen and a paper and say, okay, what's this song about? And we start writing like that. It's usually pretty quick. I mean, the songs, some of them that had a lot of lyrics uh, that t take a little bit of time, still maybe only two hours, because there's so much input from four people. Okay, well, we wish you lots of luck with, uh, with the album. Thank you. And uh, we hope to see you in the Countdown studio real soon. All right, thanks Thank a lot. You. Thanks a lot.